This week marks a significant turning point in my life as I officially joined the world of eyeglass wearers. It's a journey that begins with reading glasses, but as a newcomer to the spectacle scene, I found myself pondering a crucial question. How do I photograph these things? The lenses are shiny and reflective, much like a mirror, and even the frame itself creates specular hotspots all over the place. So that got me thinking, what if there was an easy way to photograph shiny things and make them look great? with smooth, beautiful, graduated highlights. Well, turns out there it is. Hi everybody, I'm Kirsten Lutz and you're watching Platypod TV brought to you by Platypod, where innovation never sleeps. And in today's video, I'll show you how you can photograph shiny things and create beautiful product images with an iPhone. Actually, this would work with any camera, but since I like a challenge, we might as well use a smartphone. Why not, eh? Beam me aboard. Energize. Energize. Bridge, it's shorted out again. For today's video, I picked three shiny objects to photograph using a technique that will legitimately blow your mind. And I'll have some final insights into using a smartphone for product photography at the end, so be sure to stick around for that. Eyewear. Now let's have a look at the first item glasses, or eyewear, spectacles, call it what you will. Photographing glasses is notoriously difficult because managing the reflections in the lenses is a total nightmare. So the burning question is, how can we eliminate these ugly reflections? Inspiration struck when I discovered Carl Taylor's ingenious light cone. As one of the world's foremost product photographers, Carl produces stunning images. The light cone, a diffuser shaped like a cone and crafted from translucent plastic, effectively diffuses light, eradicating hotspots and producing mesmerizing graduated highlights. Now, this would be easy if I had been able to get hold of one here in the UK, but since that proved difficult, I had to come up with an alternative. Now, I spent some time thinking about that when suddenly my little buddy here came up with a solution. Give me that. A large sized dog collar cone can double as a light cone, up to a point. There are some drawbacks with this, and I'll go into the details at the end, but for now, this will make an excellent alternative. Get off the table, come on. Let's kick things off with the setup and then I'll show you the massive difference the light cone makes. For today's shoot, I'm using the iPhone 13 Pro with the Adobe Lightroom app. This allows me to control shutter speed, aperture and ISO at will. I also find that the Apple camera app applies noise reduction automatically and I'd rather have more control in the edit. So the separate camera app is advantageous here. I've melted my iPhone on a platypod extreme and used the handle for height. To create the reach I need, I took the clamp from the new platypod grip, extending it out with an elbow. That's the perfect combo for small product photography. I'm lighting my glasses with three LumeCube panel pros, two on one side and one on the opposite side to create an even lighting effect. Although you can easily use strobes for this, the advantage with constant lights is that you can see the effect and move them around to find the right position and power setting. That being said, you'll need to be able to darken your room enough so that the ambient light won't affect your shot. Set up your lights and adjust your camera settings accordingly. As a tip, set the shutter to a three second delay to avoid any unwanted camera shake. Clearly the only camera shake you'd ever want is the Camera Shake Podcast, where I engage in weekly conversations with leading photographers. But back to our eyewear. Have a look at the difference the light cone makes. It completely eliminates those unsightly reflections and creates super smooth highlights on the top of the frame. What an incredible transformation. Perfume. My second shiny object for today is this Chiruti perfume bottle I found in my wife's extensive collection. I like the color and the shape, but the cap is as reflective as a polished mirror. This presents a whole range of challenges, but adjusting the camera angle and using my light cone immediately improves the result. Here's a top tip. In order to create a black line across the top of the cap, I've raised the light cone slightly and used a piece of black poster board to prop it up. This creates the awesome black line you'll find in many advertising shots. Simply moving the lights around will allow you to create the perfect highlights for the shot. Soda can. And here's our final image for today, a Red Bull Summer Edition soda can. As you can see from the before shot, the challenge is to move the highlight in the center and make the can look more appealing. With the light cone and the LED lights moved in the right position, I'm able to diffuse the highlight and move it to the side of the can where it underlines the company name. Then I use the light on the opposite side to create a broad, soft highlight that gives the can a more three-dimensional look. Amazingly, this took a whole two minutes to get right. So as promised, here's some final thoughts. Does the dog collar cone make a viable alternative for the Taylor light cone? Well, up to a point. The Carl Taylor light cone comes in three sizes. 
which is ideal if you're shooting objects of different sizes or use a smartphone. The light cone is made from a material that is specially calibrated for translucency and I think the results are more even and look slightly more refined. But at a pinch, the dot color will do. I found the loops on the top of the cone extremely annoying as well. And that alone warrants the investment, I think. Okay, let's talk about smartphones as well. Using your iPhone for product shots does work and it's nice to have direct feedback on the screen. It doesn't take up so much space and it's definitely much more portable than any camera system. But I must say that although I shot RAW files, I didn't think these files are nearly as flexible as Nikon or Canon RAW files, for example. So that's a major disadvantage in post-processing. Would I shoot a commercial campaign for a paying client on an iPhone? Not at this point. Does it work great for your online shop, Instagram, eBay, or Amazon listing? Yeah, absolutely. It's amazing how far these things have come. And there you have it. Easy product shots of shiny things with the help of my furry friend here. Thanks, buddy. If you want to learn more about product photography, check out my podcast, The Camera Shake Podcast, where I spoke exclusively to Carl Taylor about his incredible images, advertising photography, and photo education. And if you haven't tuned into The Camera Shake Podcast yet, well, now's the time. Jump on board. Find it on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever awesome podcasts live. All the links are waiting for you in the description below. As per usual, share a snapshot of your setup or share your final shots on Instagram. Whether you're experimenting with Platypod gear or putting our lighting setups to the test, I want to be part of your creative journey. Tag Platypod on Instagram and use the hashtag PostMyPlatypod. And hey, if you like this video, there's a special button for you just right here. Join the vibrant community over on Facebook to catch up on what other Platypod users are cooking up and hit the bell to stay in the loop with our regular videos. That wraps it up for today, my friends. Keep those creative juices flowing and I'll catch you in the next installment.